Mm-hmm. All right, welcome everybody. This is Nick Thurston with the IWCA. I have uh, my good friend Steve Blythe here, owner of J Racing Steam. Uh, and he's just going to do a quick presentation for us about all the different kind of masks that are out there with everything going on in the world with COVID. Uh, be good some, good, some good information on what works, what doesn't, and uh, just what to be aware of. So Steve, I'm going to let you take it away from here. Let me know if you need to do anything. You've got control on my screen. Right. Um, so do your thing. All right. Great. Welcome, everybody. And uh, we'll be taking any questions in each section of this. Um, so that uh, we can relate them to what we're seeing on the screen. And the, uh, um, I think the biggest worry right now that's going on is these masks, they're asking us to wear them. What are they doing for us? The government calls them face coverings, and probably for a good reason, because they don't function as a mask um, for many uh, of the items that people are actually wearing. And that, that's really the issue is, uh, you could call you could say there's a face covering there's a mask like a surgical quality mask which isn't the same as a n95 respirator and that's what we're going to cover here today so bandanas you see a lot of in the field uh, then just plain cloth masks i went by and picked this up at 7-eleven for three dollars it was interesting because it actually came with an insert which is could really make it filter you put this inside as a little sticky but this really doesn't do anything except allow you in the store. So uh, then multi-layer cloth masks, this is a single layer. Multi-layer cloth masks are better, medical style masks, and then eventually respirators. So masks, respirators are not masks. Now these are face coverings mandated by the government to let you in your supermarket. And then you get into what are masks that are regulated by different authorities for use in the field, all right? And they're really two different things. So a respirator can function in the store when you go shopping as a face covering for you, but it has a specific purpose in use. And um, a lot of it has to do with what is the filter media? What are they making that mask out of? A fabric, it's real thin here, you can almost see through it, all right? Or a, uh, a spun polyethylene material that doesn't allow your droplets from when you're speaking or when you're um, coughing or sneezing to escape straight out. So, civil covering, why? Um, it, when we first got into COVID, they said, don't bother with a mask, it's not that big a deal. But other countries proved the United States and the CDC wrong in that um, they were able to reduce the total number of passed on infection rate. Um, by just putting on simple face coverings. And uh, so the CDC changed their position and uh, they now want us to wear multi-layer cloth or masks. And the reason they said multi-layer cloth was to be able to make sure that the materials that are, that are needed for industry and for medical purposes weren't completely swept off the shelves and then we had unprotected first responders or medical workers or workers in the uh, uh, in, their indus- in their fields of industry. So they say we're supposed to stay six feet away. Even with a mask on, six feet away is, is not enough if someone's coughing or sneezing. And this is the thing you have to worry about for yourself. We're wearing the masks to protect other people from what we might have. It, very few of them as face coverings or masks are gonna protect us. And uh, so here we see on the next, slide that a cough unprotected can actually go out in during a five second time period 18 feet easily so six feet with someone coughing isn't enough and uh, so you want to remember that when you see someone coughing sorry about that got someone calling in let me turn that off and uh, so here's a another slide that talks about how, how far something goes. So when we're just exha- exhaling, okay, it's five feet or so, just a normal conversation, breathing, which is why that six foot rule, a cough starts at about six and a half feet and a sneeze can go out as far as 25 feet in this study that was done by the Financial Times. So two different people um, 
the CDC, the Medical Express News and the, the Financial Times have released a study as to what's going on with dispers dispersion patterns. So that bandana that you see people wearing, all right, is not really effective to protect other people from you. A, uh, a bandana is probably only 20% and when it's folded over, 22% of a protection over your face. So uh, people in bandanas, this is just a towel, but are uh, someone you want to stay a little further away from. And uh, the, the material of a pillowcase, it's a 600 count pillowcase folded into four layers is 60%. So even better than a bandana when folded into four layers at, in, this, in this case from the study that was released on outsideonline.com. 19.2 or about 20 percent so your next step up are cloth masks but unfortunately there are single layer cloth masks like this one and then multi-layer the cdc says to use a multi-layer mask and to use a tight material a multi-layer mask all right is going to be enough to 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 pull out a lot of that um particulate the the, the liquid particulate all right um, a single layer of t-shirt material, there are studies out, there's actually things on the website, make your own mask out of a t-shirt, be about 50%. So a single layer mask is better than a bandana, but not going to protect you from, or others from your spittle. All right, so now you got multi-layers. This was a multi-layer mask that I had bought and now have since lost. Um, and with multiple layers, you get a better chance, and they are running 60 to 70 percent filtration, that that fabric's going to stop that cough from going through a denser material. And this is where it comes into if you want to know what you have, the candle test. All right, there's a candle test video that was put up on the IWCA website next to this presentation that shows you if you put on your mask and try to blow out a candle, if you can blow out the candle through that mask, it's not doing much for you. And uh, Multiple layers are better and are probably the ones that I would suggest you try to use if you're going to use a cloth mask or someone's going to sew you up a mask. But you need to remember with this mask that they say at the CDC website, you're supposed to clean it every night. So you got to treat these like socks. You know, you take your socks off, you throw them in the washer and reuse them. So you having one mask and leaving on the dashboard of your car probably isn't the best answer for you because if you did run into any virus out there you're just taking that virus leaving it on the car you use it an hour later you're getting it on your hands all those kinds of things so it it uh, has its own issues remember they did that so that you didn't go out and buy all these masks up months ago today masks are plentiful so I would start with a medical style mask to protect you and your family the material is great it'll filter up to 80 percent only because not the material but because it leaks out the sides, all right? So when you cough, if you actually turned your head, you could point it <laughs> at the person that's, that you're coughing. You wanna cough straight with this. The metal nose clips will help get it up to that 80% to keep that in there. If you are breathing through this and your glasses are fogging, if I release those, clog, those nose clips and start to breathe, I can see my, my glasses start to fog up right now, right? You can see it in this lens. By pressing in that metal nose clip and getting it nice and tight, I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get that uh, lens fogging up anymore, and that's what gets you up to that 80% filtration rate. But I'm not ever going to get a real good seal in this area. So, but this is the first level mask that I would recommend for anybody, especially if you're worried about yourself, because this is the first one that really is going to help you try to keep whatever's out there okay that you're you're exposed to out of your system now remember these were meant in a medical setting to protect the patient from the doctor in in um, in visits and in surgeries and all those kinds of things so they really weren't meant to protect you from something when they were first generated but there are still a way better mask than any of the cloth masks and these things are super available now i went uh, to three or four stores today just to check inventory in New Jersey and they were on the shelf at all the stores so I would consider 
for your families or your own workforce standpoint, at least get to a medical mask. And then we get into respirator style. All right, there's N95, KN95, FFP2. These are just standards developed by N95 USA. KN95 is the um, China standard and FFP2 is the EU standard. And they're all very, very similar in what they say, just each of these world organizations needs to have their own standard. They don't wanna use the other guys. So for all intents and purposes, these standards are the same, they're interchangeable. So when you see an N95 mask or a KN95 or a mask that might say FFP2, like this mask does on the side, all right, that's the CE standard. They're all interchangeable for each other. They're all gonna work. You're not gonna have any um, anybody bother you that, oh, you don't have the proper mask. They're all, they're all gonna be fine. And there is a actual document from the CDC that describes all of this so that these masks, which are meant for industry, can be used in a medical setting should they need to buy them because they can't find their own medical masks. It was originally developed for dusty working environments, coal mines, uh, auto body repair work, anything where you're generating a dust, as well as for regulated industries like pest control, whether spraying chemistry or for soft washing where you're spraying bleach. They're supposed to have protection for the chemicals that are being airborne and uh, could bother your respiratory system. And, and that they come in a disposable form like this. This is a KN95 or actually an FF. P2 from Europe standard, then they have, you will find when you put this on and get the seal going on this, that I'm, it's harder to breathe because you're getting a seal all the way around and just making you breathe through the media. All right. And with the surgical mask, it was a little, I could tell it was on. The cloth mask was pretty easy to breathe through, but this, you're going to be a little labored to breathe through this. And that means that it's actually performing its task and is not only protecting the others around you, but it's protecting you too at the first level, I would say, personally. So the respirator style and respirator means that it's rated to protect you in those work environments for industry is, uh, is a great one for employees and for going out and performing work because it's gonna protect them at the highest level available today without going to N99 or higher, which they use in surgery theaters. So very good mask, 95% filtration. The um, NIOSH is who controls this for the N95 respirator. And uh, it's really about the media, all right? Not, it's not the mask that they're rating. It's the filter media, the, this, this media that is filtering it, that they're regulating. It's, it has nothing to do with the configuration of the mask for NIOSH. So um, that gets into different types of masks and we'll get to half mask respirators and full masks in a second. So it's the media that they're, they're controlling and the media needs to be in this material to allow it to be called an N95 or K95 mask. They can be used continuously um, or intermittently during the day. Um, they say that it's about eight hours or if it gets dirty or knocked about, you should change it. Um, there's people that are, if the mask is in sh good shape, using them for more than eight hours, um, but the standard doesn't really allow for that. But what I would do from a work environment is just to have an inspection procedure of the mask if they're going to use it again the next day because maybe they only used it two hours still going to have a lifespan to it if it's in good quality. So is there any fraying at the end at the edges? Can the, is the nose seal still going to allow allow you to get it closed up around your nose? Is it not fogging the glass? Those kinds of things. And get your eight hours to 10 hours out of the mask, regardless of how many days would be my suggestion for making the mask last longer. If you're going to be using a mask on a regular basis, Okay, you'll want to look at the half mask respirators. So, um, mask resp respirators like this, they rely on that good fit. We went through that with the medical mask. We'll do that again here. You just toss this thing on and don't worry about the nose fit around here. I'm going to start fogging my lens again. All right, I need to get in there and push this down to close that area and then I won't fog. So, if, they, if an employee is complaining about fogging, they're not 
getting a good fit around this, probably because they don't like the labored breathing. But that's part and parcel with this. In order to filter, you got to push the air in and out through this to uh, to get it to get it to filter the air, and that just slows it down. So form the nose cliff. Make sure you have a good fit good fit around the edges, and you can't do this with a beard and call it a good seal. So there's a whole, this is nine of the hundred and some pictures on different beards that are available to be able to decide whether or not someone can wear that respirator. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, um, if you're working in the pest control industry and you have to wear a mask, you can't, they don't, they don't allow you to wear a beard and have a, have a respirator. So um, you need to look at that as to what you're spraying, because if they're spraying bleach and they have a beard and they are breathing that in, they're really not being protected by the respirator. So the beard, the beard must seal against the, the mask or the respirator must seal and the beard gets in the way of that. So there is, this actually happens to be my niece, by the way, when I told her about her respirator in this case, she has a very nice filtration media. It's a KN95 mask. But there are masks that have a uh, port on them. It's an exhaust port. These masks were developed um, because of the complaints that the people were having about putting on this mask and having difficulty breathing. When they were breathing, it was, it was, they were labored at it. So they developed this port to allow you to exhaust your breathing air. So you could push it out, which a lot of people felt was good. And then when you breathe in, it closes. But in COVID-19, that, that's not good for your fellow person. It completely um, ruins the effect of this respirator mask to protect the people around you. So this on the end is great in a coal mine, or if you're an auto body worker with nobody around, but it's certainly not good for being out in public. And because um, that allows your breath to directly escape. So if you're gonna use masks in your, in your work environment every day, you're gonna be looking at half mask and full face respirator. So in generally for our industry, it's a half mask respirator. You get a, hey, welcome. We've got uh, manpower unlimited coming in. This provides a good seal against, against the face and the skin. It's usually more comfortable than a disposable mask and then there are click in cartridges that go on this port that have the media, you can see them in the picture, the NIOSH approved media that allows it to be called an N95 or other style mask. There's all sorts of different media for different chemistry. Um, the N95 being the standard um, by NIOSH for filtering for chemicals and pesticides in the United States. So they click that in and that media needs to be replaced after so many hours of usage as well. And the media that you buy will tell you how long it can last. So they buy these for a good fit. They buy them because the media inserts are relatively inexpensive compared to a disposable mask. And it's easier to manage having a cartridge or a, you know, a bunch of different media pieces in the field to replace in these cartridges. Um, and you can get all sorts of different media packs for this depending on what you're working in. And uh, some work environments need something higher than a N95. Come on, go to the next page. I may have moved your mouse. Yeah. Is it working? Are we at the end? Is, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, the, the basic difference between um, the half mask respirator and a full mask respirator is eye protection. All right. If you have people that are going into an area where there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, liquids or debris in the air that's going to get in the eye, and goggles and the mask are difficult to wear, then going full face is really the way to go. Um, that's good. That's often mandated at a uh, industrial facility. I was at a soy processing facility, a lot of dust in the air and they didn't, they had full face respirators there because of that. Um, it, uh, it isn't something you're going to see in the field, but that's really the difference between a full face 
is the, uh, that gives you that full eye protection through the N95 filter, where if you just have a set of goggles, you can still get whatever's in the air through that goggle, um, through its airport and into your eyes. So depending on what's uh, out there, usually your industrial facility will tell you, we have to go full face here um, in order to allow you to go in. And that pretty much wraps up the uh, levels of different masks and respirators. Awesome. So manpower unlimited here. I know you came in a little bit late, no worries. Uh, if you have any questions about what happened before I sent you a message on the chat, you guys can go check this out. Um, we'll post, post the video up on the IWCA next to the other presentations. Uh, and on the YouTube channel and everything. <clears throat> but for now, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat box and we'll try to get to them. Uh, otherwise, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Either I did really war poorly or really well, I guess. <laughs> no, you did great, Steve. <laughs> so. I think one thing you said that, uh, that is, is a big common misconception um, that I've seen at least, uh, is thinking that the masks are just to protect yourself. So, so that was a good point you made. And, and I want to stress that for everyone else. It's not just about protecting yourself. It's about, you know, you could be carrying uh, the virus or, or anything and not have symptoms. And if you cough, sneeze, uh, spit, what have you, um, you could affect, infect other people and not even know it. So. And if you are going to be worried about protecting yourself, you, you need to get into the, N, the KN95 and the N95 respirator because it's the only one offering you a level of, of uh, protection. Right. Um, the surgical masks aren't going to, and none of the cloth masks will really protect you. They protect other people. Right. We did a study um, on this for some of our customers because we're, we're offering sanitizing sprayers and things with mm -hmm. the plexiglass shield. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, where a, a plexiglass shield was placed between um, two people sitting next to each other in an office cubicle. And if that shield was just not quite enough high, it was useless. It needed, need to be, needed to be a good foot or so higher or over their head. Right. For breathing, let alone, let alone uh, sneezing or coughing. Just yeah. for breathing. Yeah. So um, there's a lot to this. I didn't include in this one the I have a cough dispersion pattern in a grocery store where it shows over time the, the spray that goes out from the cough and how it actually in the air conditioning takes it over and moves it into the aisle next door. Wow. Yeah. So this stuff <laughs> likes to run around. These things, yeah. The things you can't see are the scariest. Uh, we got a question here from Manpower. Uh, and if you want to type your name in there for me, I'll call you your real name. Uh, he says, thoughts on RZ type masks rating wise. I have never heard of that. Do you know what I'm talking about or what he's talking about, Steve? It's a reusable air filtration, right? And uh, so it, um, they're most, the ones, the ones I just pulled up on, I just looked it up on Google in this instance as an RV mask. The, the RV mask that I'm seeing on the website have the exhaust port. Um, so that, since they have an exhaust port on either side of the mask, they're going to um, is exhaust your breath into the air and they're really not gonna be good for the reason why COVID-19 CDC mandates out there. Um, the second piece with, with a mask like this is that we described on any of the cloth masks, you're going to want to, to clean this daily. And the RZ masks that I'm looking at on this rzmask.com, they have a internal, filter that goes with an outside cover that has holes for the ports um, or it's going to be one difficult to clean because you're getting them you're getting the COVID-19 on the outside of the mask the filtration is also filtering it for coming in but then your exhaust is going out the ports straight into the atmosphere for other people which kind of messes up what the CDC is trying to do with face coverings right Right, and, and you said RV, is that the same as RZ? Z is in Z. Oh, that's yeah, RZ, I'm sorry if okay. I said RV. Uh, okay. RZmask.com is, I just, I went to get one look at it and then give my in, you know, interpretation of what I'm seeing. And an inner filter is great for you, perhaps enough to protect you like an N95 if the seal is good, and that media, because it doesn't say on the RZ media that it's N95 rated, 
N95 rated, which is a NIOSH in the United States standard. Um, it just says it's a carbon, an active carbon filter. So Got it. if they have the right media, it'll protect you. But with the valves, it's not going to protect anyone else. So it's not really meeting the CDC's desired effect of protecting other people. Got it. Hopefully that answered your question, Alex. If not, go ahead and uh, ask for some clarification there as well. Um, and Steve, you said something that, that also brought up a good point about washing the masks, the cloth masks, especially. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not only, like you said, are you getting contaminants on the outside of the mask, so it could you could spread it, but keep in mind, you're also breathing inside those masks, which, you know, the, the breath coming out of your body is moist, and it can create an environment where other bacteria could grow. It might not be the virus, but other bacteria could grow over time inside those things. So, uh, Or so allow the virus to stay there longer than or, you imagine. Oh, right. if I let this sit for three hours, it'll be fine. Well, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not, right. So yeah, I, I like that analogy. It's like socks. <laughs> Wear yeah, them one like day socks. and throw them away. Yeah. <laughs> or not throw them away. Wash them. <laughs> Wash them, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other questions here? Nikki covered a lot there, Steve. That was awesome. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. No, I definitely learned a lot. I did not know that there were that many different kinds of masks out there. Great. Well. Let's cool. stay protected because we saw our first reports of a second wave after the Memorial Day happenings. So, yep. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And Steve, they can get masks directly from you, yes? Yes. We have the both the medical style and KN95s by the tens of thousands. So. Perfect. So go over to Jay Racenstein and, and grab you guys some, some masks. If you need to, if you want to get a hold of this presentation, uh, just go into the campus IWCA and go under new courses and you'll see it there uh, along with that candle uh, test and I will get this presentation uploaded there as well. So obviously if you're seeing this later, you'll already know that. But <laughs> for the time being, if you guys do need it, just go log into your campus IWCA and, and you'll be able to find it. If you have any questions on accessing it or seeing it, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. And thank you for being here, you guys. And thank you, Steve. That was great. Very much appreciated. Unless yep. there's anything else, we'll, we'll go ahead and let you get out. Take care. All right, you guys. Right. Thank you.